Hi, Joseph. How are you doing? So, I'll have to first remove the implants. And if you want five of them, I'll make a cut. I'll put the bone up again inside. Yeah. So basically, I'm retruded. My upper and lower jaws are retruded. Um, I'm looking to advance my mandible, uh, my B point. So we have a gentleman from uh, America who has undergone around uh, six to seven times uh, surgeries. First, on the upper jaw, we're bringing the upper jaw forward by 6.5 centimeters. We're bringing it posteriorly downwards by 12 millimeters. Basically, we've improved the projection of the upper jaw, increased the airway, and therefore also would be curative in terms of the patient's sleep apnea issue. But the part of the face between the nose and the chin was way inside, and that's the part of the face that's actually needed for breathing. Perhaps to manage the food. So. You can just keep a small tab on what's happening, they'll give you and they draw you. It's going to be nothing. It's not exactly the same cut because we've moved it forward now. So that's why you can see the change in anatomy because it's moved. Hi Joseph, how are you doing? I'm doing well, come on over here. I know it's not very comfortable, you can sit down there if you want otherwise. Okay. So, we already went through your case, but I just want to go what through the records that you have. Yeah. What do you mean? <clears throat> so basically, you understand what's happening, right? Yeah. So what we're doing is this kind of rotation. Yeah. You're okay with that? Yeah. See, the problem with the counterclockwise rotation, a lot of times you lose vertical height. Yes. So what do you do? I need to advance the maxilla. Yeah, so we need But to you're giving just 2.5 millimeter gloves, man. You can go 3 or 4 even. I need to do more, yeah. Okay, that's fine, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise you won't get the fullness here. That's fine. And you will get the height here. Yeah, that's perfectly fine, yeah. yeah. In fact, when I think when you smile, you should have 1 millimeter of gum. Okay. When you, I don't know if you get yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this could go up, okay? So if you can stick with this, then this is gonna go up. Yeah, that's fine, I'm perfectly fine. More is fine, you can go, cra go crazy I mean, as much as you want. <laughs> just, um, my lower, my upper midline incisor is coming forward 13, uh -huh. and then it's going down 2.9, but you could even go more, like you said. You mm -hmm. can go, or you could be more, more and that's fine. Yeah. That's a lot. So you're saying more than 2.9? I'm saying 30 oh. millimeters is a lot. Oh, okay. No, 13 millimeters forward. Yeah, that's a oh. lot. I think it's good. I like it. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot though. I don't think we should do too much. I'm going to be, let me on, be honest okay. to tell you, any movement more than 10 mm is a little difficult. Yeah. Okay. 10 mm is like the ballpark figure that we keep when we're doing chart and Yeah. Age. Because more than that is not only technically difficult, but also high relapse rates. And warrants grafting. Yeah. Uh, everywhere we can't be grafting. Because posteriorly grafting between the uh, buttress and the delicate plane is not possible. Yeah. Down grafting? Possible. Okay. Okay. So this 12 mm, this 13, that should be the maximum. Of the e even if you gave me some binax protrusion, it's okay. I'm, I'm fine with I'm fine with that. So really? Yeah, I, I think okay. I think this is my philosophy and my philosophy goes against I know they say that proportion, I know you said the three triad, you said symmetry, yeah. proportion, and function. I, I actually disagree on the proportion part. Uh -huh. I think facial disproportion done right is what makes, makes faces yeah, attractive. Right. Look at Angelina Jolie. She has, oh, yeah. she has oh, that's what we call as an anti-face. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, this anti-face uh, is not a very old concept. I think it looks pretty okay. 
um, for some people to have a strong lower third of the face. Yeah, but if you have a very weak middle third, but then you shouldn't give for a strong lower third. Yeah, because I also think so you're getting 13 millimeters of middle third advancement. Yeah, because I also I have a, a severe sleep apnea. I have a sleep study for that. I can show it to you. I. It, it's not really relevant, but I no, mean, no, it's yeah, relevant because it's yeah. going to get fixed with this. Yeah, I just want I want it's to open, relevant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just want to open my airway also. Absolutely. So the twelve millimeter down grafting yeah increases your posterior airway a lot. Yeah, a lot. I've seen there's a there's a doctor uh, I forgot his um I forgot his name he's in Switzerland. Uh huh. You know he he Maybe got Herman Zeiler. Yeah, yeah, Zyler. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does big counterclockwise rotations. Oh, he's I, famous I, for that. He's my prof. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, I was with him. So, he's in Zurich. He's a pretty old man now, though. He has to do a lot of surgeries. But yeah. So my my cuspid on my upper is coming in this plan is 10.6. Mm -hmm. And then down 7.9 with the counterclockwise rotation. So 10.6. Okay. And then down seven point nine. So then, see what I'm proposing. I, I'm not. But what about the mandible exactly? Yeah. So the mandible. See, look. Let me show you. See that when I do this. This is how I want it to look. It's okay. Extreme. This. I want just the most extreme advancement you can do. Okay. okay. See how crazy. Without breaking your bite. Yeah. So what is the millimeter they say? So like this. This is twelve point three. Perfect. You remember yeah. this. This is related. Yeah. See, yeah. Because when you get to upper by 13, so you're a little bit 12. In, in, um, so, and then again, the upper midline and size are, or the lower midline and size are mandible in this plan is coming down 3.3. .3. Okay. So, so that's related to this. Correct. Yeah, correct. So that's okay. We don't have to worry about that. Thanks. And then the top molar. That's or the, okay. excuse me, the bottom no, molar. I, I want to go on to the genioplasty now. Okay. Well, can I just go over? The, I mean, we just go over just for a sure. second. So the bottom molar is coming 13.4 and then down 6.6. Um, .6, that's related to the counterclockwise rotation. And Pogonian 15. Six, 16 actually and down 7.9. Okay, one second. That seems high again. And then the genioplasty. One second. So Pogonian is seven, six, and eighteen. Um, Pogonian seven point eight. Seven. Yeah, no, yeah. So Pogonian is eight, six, and eight. That's half, roughly half. Okay. Yeah. So could you do the Pogonian? Could you do seven point eight vertical? Um, uh, so yeah. that sixteen might be a little difficult. Okay. I'll let you know the final things. See, I, like I said, uh, so the 12, 13 mm, I'll do it. Yeah. This 12, I can do. But 15, 16, sometimes maybe it's 13, 12. Still will be okay. good. Okay. Still will be significant change. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, if you go too big, I'm not going to be upset. Okay. I'm not. I get that point. I get that <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then the yeah. genioplasty, you might have to make some intraoperative decisions. Basically, the point of the genioplasty is one, increase the from my stomion mm -hmm. to my benton. I want to increase you want it less 4.9? Yeah, yeah, 5 millimeters from my stomion to my mentin. Or no, sorry, anterior, posterior. This way is 5? Um, yeah, vertical. 4. From, from stomion to mentin, it says 4.2, but you could go 5. You okay. could go 5. And then it says minus 4.9. The minus 4.9, you might have to make an intraoperative decision. I just want my pagonian to not be in front of my vermilion border. Okay. You know, I just, you know, you know, because so you don't want a J line of chin, you know, you get it straight. Yeah. So what you're basically looking at with the chin, you want to get this height reduced and you want to increase the projection. Well, more height, no, more height. But anterior posterior is reduced. Okay, yeah. Anterior posterior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's not a good idea. Because if you reduce anterior posteriorly, you will get some loose skin there. Why do you want to reduce it? Well, I, well I'll let you make an interactive. I'll let you make an interactive, interactive decision. Mm -hmm. you know I just, mean? yeah, I just don't want. I just don't want. I just don't want the pagonian to be in front of the vermilion border. You know, like I just don't want to be excessive, like a Jay Leno chain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I want really a lot of vertical. Like the pagonian is coming down eight, so a lot of vertical. Like you see how my CT scan it yeah. healed. 
I already gained eight millimeters from this genioplasty. I want to gain. I want to gain another, another, um, another four and a half or five from that existing position. Especially in the vertical. The vertical. Yeah. See, that, this is an example. If you do something in two stages, like I think we. So yeah. I think what we have to do for the genioplasty. Um, so I have to first remove the implants. If you want five of them, I make a cut. I'll put the bone graft again inside. Yeah. So that way, because you're doing a revision, and then there's a lot of new bone that's formed, which is not as thick as the original bone. Yeah. So but to get another five of them there without a graft is going to be difficult. And since they're anyway harvesting the graft for the maxilla, so I might as well use another five mm ledge in between. Okay. So I get the height. So you can give me another five here. Yeah, I okay. think that should be possible. Okay. But that should not be a difficult thing. But you want reduction in this four four mm. Why? Well, well see four point nine. Um. Why well, don't we let that stay the way, guys? See, basically here in the plan, they have. I don't know four mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but okay. I remember the soft tissue. When you take it back, it tends to get loose and okay. it's like a balloon that's blown. Yeah. Okay, I'll just, I mean, if you want to just, I don't know, you know, take this to the operating room or... No, no, we yeah. I, I'm writing down my notes. Yeah. I'm going to do one more test for you. So, that's an MRI dynamic sleep study. Yeah. Because you mentioned about your sleep study earlier. This will give you good information. I'll schedule this uh, investigation for you either later today evening or tomorrow. And this is also going to give us a lot of information uh, with regards to your airway. Okay. Uh, and not exactly in relation to your facial positioning airway. One other question uh, on the same lines about your snoring. Yes. So how severe is it? Do you have it regularly? Don't have it? What um, is it? You know, it's like my it's like weird. Like normally I breathe fine out of my nose, uh -huh. but like when my consciousness falls below a certain level, I don't know if the muscles in my throat if they loosen up. Or if something with my smooth muscle happens, but then I get like I get a lot of. The, I'm not sure if it's from the rhinoplasty. I had a rhinoplasty. No, 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 it's, big, it's not rhinoplasty. It's because the posterior airway is less. When you open your mouth, there's more air that can go in. So all of this is indicative that I need to do this one test again. Why? Because two reasons. One for diagnostic reasons. Another one is also for therapeutic reasons post-surgery. So you could do a sleep dynamic six months later and you know like everything is the right position and you've sorted it out. Okay. Okay? So basically, I'm retruded. My upper and lower jaws are retruded. Um, I'm looking to advance my mandible. Uh, my B point is retruded. This is the B point. My B point is retruded about 12 and a half millimeters. Um, and the way we're going to do this, the maxilla is like the workhorse of the procedure. Um, the anterior nasal spine is coming forward and the posterior nasal spine is coming forward seven. The anterior nasal spine is coming down four. And the posterior nasal spine is coming down 12. What that's gonna do, it's gonna allow advancement of the mandible to come forward, not the chin. The chin is actually coming back. The chin's in an unnatural position. Um, I have a short face. I'm looking to get a little more tooth show. I'm anticipating my pagonian to come forward 16 millimeters. My upper midline incisor, I'm anticipating to come forward 13 millimeters. Um, with the counterclockwise rotation, we're gonna harvest bone from my iliac crest to fill in that 12 and a half, that 12 millimeter gap at the posterior nasal spine.
Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to think. My my upper molar, I forgot the specs on that, but yeah, I mean, the, the maxilla, when you move the maxilla forward, when you, you free up the BSSO, you do the BSSO cut first, that frees it up, and then the maxilla is the workhorse. Wherever the maxilla does, the, the mandible follows, so that's, the maxilla it controls everything, is that right? Yes, yes. So the maxilla is the workhorse of the procedure, and I'm looking just, you know, not just the chin, but the whole face to come forward. Um, yeah. Did I say that That right? That is an incredible introduction. Thank you so much. It's generally a rule reversal of sorts. Rarely do we get patients who are so well informed, who are so well read, and they're aware of their problems completely, not, not on a, a platonic level. He has done his research, he knows the measurements well. And uh, as he described, all the figures that he has told has been after a lot of research. So post a lot of research, post a lot of analysis, he has come to the conclusion that these will be the particular movements that will be apt for him. It will give his face the desired changes. What I'm, more, I'm, I'm yeah. also, I'm getting down grafting of my chin too. I'm getting four and a half or five millimeters down grafting of my genioplasty. I had a previous genioplasty a year yes, and a half ago. And this is actually kind of a stage two genioplasty. I gained about eight millimeters of down grafting before. We're gonna gain another five, five millimeters vertical on the genioplasty. I think the vertical of the chin, the lower third, it gives a masculine look. I'm looking to increase the masculinity of my face. Right. So as he rightly mentioned, it is going to be a revision genioplasty. We can have seen the scan. Dr. Richardson has explained that the implants placed at the genium, that is the mentum region, which is the chin. Also, there are implants placed along the malar region for him. Yes. Apart from what is the surgical planning and what he has come for, I would also like you to have a discussion with the viewers out there because there are millions of people who are watching you. How has been your journey to Richardson sir so far? If you would sum it up, right moments before the surgery. I think it's been an experience of a lifetime. You know, I'm glad I came here, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> you know, I've never been to India before. This is the first time ever? Yes. Okay. I think a lot of Americans are probably scared to come to India, but to me, seeing the videos on YouTube, seeing the intraoperative videos of Sidel Richardson doing the surgery, it instills confidence in his ability. Right, and right. A lot of surgeons, they're scared, you know, they're very shy and timid, you know, to showcase their work, you know, they don't want anything. I see maxillofacial surgeons, no pictures on the website. No before and after, like, you know, that doesn't, that does not instill confidence. Right, yeah. rightly said, the presentation matters, the outreach is important, and he rightly pointed out. Uh, how did you happen to contact Dr. Richardson? I know now the world is digital, it's becoming shorter and smaller, but still, given that you literally stay continents apart, how did you manage to contact Dr. Richardson? Like he says, WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's been a virtual connect. And then you flew down to the um, country and the state. Yeah, I flew to Doha okay. and then to Trivandrum. Okay. And then I took an Uber. Okay. Okay. How has been your discussion, your pre-operative discussion with Dr. Richardson? Good. Like, did it pan out well the way you thought? He gave you his inputs, you gave some of yours? You see, I actually consulted many natural facial surgeons before coming to him during the, a year or so of research. Um, and I, you know, I did consult with another surgeon. He gave me a really good plan actually, but for whatever reason, he didn't follow up with me. So I had the good plan in hand and I just needed someone to execute the plan. Right, right, yes. He's being very honest in telling that because the time he met Dr. Richardson, he had a plan in his hand, literally a plan. There were all the figures down there. The movements, surgical movements were all anticipated, marked and written down. It was just that he needed somebody, some surgeon um, 
truly of his merit and capability to execute that and he's literally roamed all over continents continents if i may say um searching for somebody to execute the plan for him and another another reason i told our chose so sunil richardson is a lot of surgeons in the u.s they're scared of the plan to be honest with you they're scared of the 12 millimeter down graft they say it's not stable they say it's risky and it's just i believe in shooting for the stars like okay that's the plan that gives me the best outcome why would i spend all this money on a mediocre plan you know i want True. the best plan i want to go into the surgery with the best plan True. I mean, there's, you need to have the best plan and then you need someone to execute the plan. Right. So I, I feel I have a good plan. So that, that's, I mean, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, how has been the change in the sense, yes, it's a surgical outing, so as to say for you, but it's a new place, it's a new food, a new people. It's been so far so good. May yeah, I say I that? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, did some walking around. You know, I tried some <laughs> Indian street food, and it's been kind of an adventure. You know, I liked it. You know, I wish I could have done more touring. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, yeah, so pre-surgery, it's all that you could manage, and then there's a surgery happening. Okay. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, being so articulate, sharing your viewpoint because that's important for us and for the people on the other side. So he's come here, as you can see very well briefed well read articulate about what his plans are it's sort of the right surgeon meeting the right patient or and vice versa uh, dr richardson has had a detailed discussion a thorough examination the scans have been explained he saw all your figures and we just about to start um, the procedure for him so it's live minutes before his actual surgery and it's kind of interesting because it seems like a lot of surgeons seems like a lot of surgeons they do not like an informed patient <laughs> it seems like maybe they don't like me because i know too much i don't know <laughs> <laughs> don't worry sir don't worry that's, okay. <laughs> that's you're completely right on your part to be well aware that's that's a patient's right so you're completely right on your part okay and rarely we get such patients so they, we are treasured that way such patients okay yeah okay thank you sir thank you thank you thank you So we have a gentleman from uh, America who has undergone around uh, six to seven times uh, surgeries and has come for revision surgeries. We are planning a submental intubation for this patient. Yeah. So I put the bougie inside and trying to put a 7.5 mm flexometallic tube remove the bougie so successfully intubated So we're just starting a bimax with a revision genio with angle osteoplasty, sagittal split osteotomy, with bone grafting, especially counterclockwise movement of the upper jaw. Total face makeover for this patient. This is before we've given a submental intubation. He also has sleep apnea. That's also going to get corrected with this surgery. So we're going to start with bimaxillary osteotomy with a revision genioplasty. Basically we've got, this is how the patient is, I want to show you the picture first. So he's from the US and we're going to do first on the upper jaw. We're bringing the upper jaw forward by 6.5 centimeters. 
We're bringing it posteriorly downwards by 12 millimeters. So it's a counterclockwise movement of the upper jaw. The anterior nasal spine is coming down by 6 millimeters. So 12, 6, and 6.5. That's the kind of movement that we're doing to the upper jaw. Bilateral suggested split osteotomy to get the good occlusion back. We already had a genioplasty 3 implant sitting in. We're going to augment the chin vertically by 5 millimeters, and we're not going to do any horizontal increase. If possible, I'm going to take it back by 4 millimeters. Now, in order to get the counterclockwise movement by 12 millimeters and the revision genioplasty by 4 millimeters augmentation, I'm going to be harvesting bone from the iliac crest because this is going to be as a bone graft in order to make the maxilla stable and in order to give them good results. That's the plan. We've made the splints ready. We've given some mental intubation. I'm going to start. It's probably going to take me about four to four and a half hours. Thank you. Type of a surgery. So we've done a lot of things. The upper jaw, lower jaw, chin. This was a maxillary advancement, anti-clockwise movement by 12 millimeters, anterior nasal spine movement by 3 millimeters. Basically, we have improved the projection of the upper jaw, increased the airway, and therefore also would be curative in terms of the patient's sleep apnea issues. We're going to show you how we look before. So you can see that. So there was a lot of mid-phase hypoplasia, which is also translating to loss of projection and proportions. But the part of the face between the nose and the chin was way inside. And that's the part of the face that's actually needed for breathing and it's essential for airway. So we've corrected that. You can see the improvement. to manage the food so uh, you can just keep a small tab on what's happening they give you and they throw you it's gonna be nothing okay so that's the reason why we just for everybody we don't include food and also because if we give food then we have to make sure that it's from the canteen with all the basic health requirements and we don't have that okay that's okay. the reason we're not able to do that with food okay and the other reason is so the food is the only thing that I included is not included that's all we think? All we think, all we Okay. So everything is down or not? Okay. Take another one. I don't know, Dave. I don't know what. That's don't. good. Okay. It's better than brufen because a lot of brufen can get upset your stomach. Okay. Yeah. So we're giving you only two things now. Ibuprofen, uh, sorry, paracetamol and Kitrolac. Okay. So those are the safest and we keep fentanyl here. Okay. But you don't not needing it as of now. But if you want, we can add on ibuprofen, not a problem. Okay. We generally don't like to be proven because if you take it for too many days, it upsets upset your stomach. Because what I like about it is an anti-inflammatory. We're giving you yeah. steroids right now. Okay, okay. We're giving you Dexona, Dexamethasone. Okay. That's why your swelling is less. And we slowly taper it off. So we're, gonna, we're giving you three times a day now. It's going to be two times a day, either from tomorrow or the day after. Okay. And then once a day, and then we stop it. So once we stop that, then you start that also. Okay. That third one which you gave. Yes. Okay. And we will give you on the third day. Once we stop the dexon, I will tell you okay. fourth day, third day, something. Okay. At that time we also start a tablet for you here. It's called dissenture. It's pretty much like that. To reduce the swelling quickly. Okay. But we don't want you to take now because we already give you. Okay. I'm glad that you didn't rush with the cheek implants, you know, because 
So no, no. Yeah. Nothing is messed up. Okay. Even your braces are intact. Okay, I appreciate, All of them. I appreciate that. All yeah. of that. There was nothing. So we didn't exactly ask for a plan. Yeah, sure. but the yeah. only thing which I thought on the table was on the table is probably we should be careful. Yo, how, and how the graft also should heal. The how, graft also can get infected. You could graft here, you could graft there, you could graft there. How long do I need to care for Four weeks? How many? Four weeks. Oh, I was thinking it would be more. I was thinking, no, no. Oh, okay. After four weeks, it won't. It just be there. It'll take much longer for it to totally heal. Yeah. But in four weeks, it's out of. I think in two weeks, it's out of. That's like the critical mass. It's like the, the, cur the critical mass point. The critical point where it's more likely to relapse before it heals. Is that right? Upper jaw. The upper jaw. Upper jaw. Because it's like here, here strength or here. See, no, it's not because of anything. Your upper jaw is not very thick. So the bone thickness and the density of your upper jaw is not much. Yeah. It's 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 actually like a like an Indian woman, which is very flimsy. Usually for men, it's it's firmer. I did check that on the scan, but what happens is the thickness we know. But we don't exactly get to the density of the upper jaw. I, no. The lower jaw is good tensions, yes. both vertical and horizontal. And so it's not easy to pull and bring down or anything that's not strong. Because that's that crumble. Yeah, so that's why it was hard to get the upper jaw forwards in the right position. Okay. Yeah. But still I've done a little bit more than what your measurements say in terms of your anterior spine. Because if it was just that, then I was scared that your teeth is not going to be visible. I will take care of everything. Okay. And I'm going to see you in three days again. I'll show you one by one phrase. So first, look here. This point and this point. This is your upper jaw, posterior point. If you move the PNS, this moves. See now. Okay? Yeah. That's in three. Second, look like this. And I'm going to show you the. This is the distance between the upper jaw now. And this is the distance now. Okay. So that's because of the bone grafting. I'll show you the bone graft later on. Okay. Then this is the anterior nasal spine. We're bringing it by about. Three millimeters here. Three down, down, three. down. That's that's what they can see here. Then this is the chin. Yes. All the three implants have been removed, and you are advanced by five millimeters. Yes. You actually took it back, back a little slightly back. I took it back because you what you wanted. Yes. And five millimeters. Okay. So this is all the actual planning. Okay. And this is the advancement rotation that has happened. You can see the gap here. Can you see that gap? This yeah. is because we moved the upper jaw and because it's rotated, I have a you can see the ledge there. Do you rotate the lower jaw with the upper jaw? Yes. Okay. Otherwise you can't get it. And because of the rotation, you see the ledge. There's no ledge there. Okay. Because of the rotation. And there's double plates here, double plates here, and there are three plates on top. Okay? I have not disrupted any of your earlier yeah. and they're all intact. Yeah, okay. Okay, now I'll show you some other views wherein you can see more details. Now the first thing is the... Uh, okay, I think a picture of this. This you will get it with okay. you. Okay. See here. This is the airway, right? Yeah, I'm going to show you the chin first. Okay. This is the graph in between. I just want you to look here, airway. Sure. Okay. So this is the airway, is that right? Yeah. yeah. When you, can you take, this is a sagittal slice, is that right? This is sagittal. Yeah, it's just mid-sagittal all the way in the middle? Yes. All right. And you can see the difference, how much it has yeah. changed. Okay. Already. Okay. It's not exactly the same cut because we've moved it forward now. So that's when you can see the change in anatomy. Because it's moved. Okay. You know, because it's moved by a lot. Alright. Ah, there it is. This is the bone graft. 
that you see sitting in the posterior side. I want to show you. We can take, the, we can take it with the measurement now. That's the length of the bone graph. You can, you can check these things later on. Okay, Raja. You need help there while you're the hotel. Our manager. Okay, thank you. I appreciate he will uh, he will take care of you. Put it over there. Or she's gonna drop you off. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Uh -huh.